Hi, and uh, welcome back to our Movement Method um, educational series. Um, we put this out through our website, ntls.co. Got tons more on there, so if you like what you see today, please um, check us out there. Okay, we're going to talk about your friend, the Perkinji cells. Funny name, Perkinji. Sounds like a Pokemon character, right? Like a thing with floppy ears and a big eyes that goes, Perkinji, Perkinji. But it's not. Uh, they're named after a Czech scientist in the 19th century called Purkinje, and it shows how um, Western-oriented um, our history books are because he doesn't show up in any of uh, the Western history books. People like Leonardo da Vinci and Edison and Bell and these people show up. But Purkinje seems to have invented everything and discovered everything. He's like a 19th century Leonardo da Vinci. Check him out on Wikipedia. P-U-R-K-I-N-J-E. He, in the 19th century, among other things, discovered certain neurons, certain uh, brain cells, very, very big ones, because, of course, back then the microscopes weren't very good, so they had to be big. And these are brain cells which are um, created in the cerebellum. They are responsible not just for your motor skills, but for your social skills and they seem to act like a communication network in the brain. They get the different parts of your brain talking to each other properly. Now, guess what? It turns out that in autism, um, in many uh, autopsies on adult autists, you see a deficit of Purkinje cells. In fact, something even weirder, a kind of self cropping, self-culling of Purkinje cells going on in the brain. No one quite knows why. But this might explain if uh, the um, brain isn't communicating properly with itself, which a lack of Purkinje cells would do. It might explain why, say, one person might remember all the football scores of a team for 10 years but can't wipe his bum, or someone might have great math skills but not so great social skills, or something like that. Over-specialization and growth in one area, not so much in the other area, perhaps. One of the interesting things about certain kinds of movement, anything where you move and problem solve, where you have to find your balance, where you have to uh, play, for example, especially physical play. It makes your cerebellum produce lots and lots and lots of Purkinje cells. So that's why you see people's brains starting to sort of normalize in function um, when they engage in these activities, you know, people reporting in therapeutic riding, oh my god, the kid just suddenly started talking and like behaving sort of normally when they didn't before, or when uh, you're going out for a hike in the forest like we are right now, for example, suddenly you can really sort of think through your problems and um, you get out of those weird negative emotional loops that you might have been on before you went on the walk. Purkinje cells are a very good thing. So you've got to move, you've got to play if you want these. If you're coming from a position where um, you might have a deficit of them, you definitely want to spend all your time moving and playing. So aut autism parents out there, you want to be um, putting together a kind of 24-7 culture in your house, in your apartment, out here and in playgrounds and so on, of moving and problem solving, which is using play equipment, which is walking through these woods, which is this sort of thing. A little bit of it every day, preferably a lot of it every day, gets lots of Purkinje cells going, gets brain functioning normalized. Please, if you want to know more about the neuroscience of what we do, go to ntls.co, that's our website. If you sign up there for a silver membership, you can get all of our educational modules, all of our behavioral modules. If you sign up for a bronze membership, there's a lot of stuff too, that's free. But 10 bucks a month gets you access to everything, and we are constantly working with neuroscientists and autists from around the world, making this available. So, see you there.